Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your buddy Chewy coming at you. It's been a while. Uh, Pip and I had a, a wonderful conversation about our favorite, all-time favorite albums about a month ago. Not quite a month. Um, and it was great. Ironically enough, we were going to get together and, and record this evening, but for a variety of reasons that didn't happen. So I think we're going to try to give it a go next week. Uh, it's, it's his choice of topic uh, for this next episode. Uh, he's got a couple of outstanding options that I think he's toying with in his head. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, what he ultimately decides. And I hope you tune in and listen to that conversation. I just wanted to jump on this evening and vent a little bit. Uh, you know, we are a year or so, not quite a year into COVID. Uh, I think the the first episode of this podcast, uh, I think there was something on the order of like 17 or 18 cases in the state of Ohio. And, um, and now we're up over 750,000 cases, something like 10,000 deaths. So it is, it is very real. It is still here. I'm sure, you know, family and friends that have been affected or have it, or you've had it yourself. And I hope that, uh, that you were, that you've gotten through it. Okay. And, and everything is, you know, everybody in your world is happy, safe, and healthy. Uh, so my, my oldest son is 14. He plays basketball. And we got a call the other day from the superintendent after one of his basketball games that a player on the other team had tested positive after the game. Um, I guess I'll put aside for a moment my bitterness about the fact that a kid was playing in a game when he presumably already thought, you know, he might have had it, right? Uh, I I don't know if the test was taken before the game or after the game. If it was before the game, then I'm even more pissed because he then, he went and he played a game with a pending test and then found out after the game. But even still, um, you know, if he went and got tested after the game, there, there was a reason for him to go get that test. Anyways, so of course, naturally, it was the kid that, that my son was guarding. So we got a call from the athletic director, and he said that he has to quarantine for 10 days, which of course is going to, you know, essentially eliminate the rest of his season. Uh, he's a two-sport athlete. He's a basketball player, and he's a baseball player, and he absolutely lives for basketball. And so as you can imagine... He is a 14-year-old boy who has just been crushed by the system that he's not allowed to play basketball. He went this morning to get a rapid test. He is negative, as, as we anticipated he would be. And that doesn't make a difference to the, the county or the school district. He still has to remain quarantined for 10 days. He has to uh, remain off the basketball court for 14 days. And to say that that upsets him and by extension me for him is an understatement. I feel terrible for him. I, I understand the desire to keep everybody safe. I understand the quarantining when you've been in contact with somebody that has tested positive, I guess what I don't understand is, I I guess I would have assumed that a negative test after exposure would have made it so he wouldn't have to quarantine. I I don't know. Maybe they're thinking that the incubation period is, you know, a few days and he might develop symptoms later. I don't know. Uh, But it, it is... It is, this is the closest that this has come to affecting our family. We've had, you know, friends that have had it and our next door neighbor had it. We've got several people in the neighborhood that have had it, but this is, this is the closest. And and believe me, this is, this is not a a sob story. I understand that if, if this is all that we have to deal with, right, of, of him having to quarantine because you in in contact with somebody that is far better than literally millions of people around the globe. So I, I, I understand that. I get that. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that, that I'm frustrated really for him because he has really, really worked incredibly hard on his basketball season 
and he's a you know his his season is effectively over because you know a kid played a game when he probably shouldn't have been playing so that's a bummer um again I feel really bad for him so but again I, I don't want to this is not a woe is me uh oh my god look how terrible everything is I I get it this is small beans in comparison to everything that other people are dealing with. So I, I guess this is just a, this was a reminder for me and a wake up call for me that this thing is still very real and has very real consequences. Even if you don't get it right, you might just be exposed and, and you still have consequences. So I hope everybody is staying safe. I hope everybody is staying healthy. I hope you're, you're doing what you need to do to keep you and your family and your friends safe, healthy, and happy. And I'm sincerely hoping that when we come out of this, which we will, everybody is going to be better off for it. Ultimately, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to keep a positive, open mind about everything. Some days are are more difficult than others, but I think it's it, it's very therapeutic for me to to be able to get on here and, and talk to you and 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 just kind of ramble. So thanks thanks for listening. Thanks for all the support that you guys have given the podcast. Pip and I are ecstatic about the, the feedback that we've been get, been getting. And as as long as you guys keep listening, we're going to keep doing it. Hell, we're going to keep doing it even if you're not listening because we have a blast doing it. But hope everybody's good, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.